Welcome to Intro to NEPA. Activities that may impact environmental resources. And so at scoping, we'll say, all right, be aware of these you know, trees and noise and air and history. And then at the same time, we're talking about, we want to understand what the activities are associated with the project. And this helps us understand what the impacts might be. If it's a resurfacing project on Central 70, then you know it's, it, it may not be a concern. We want to understand the intensity of the project. But if we're doing some blasting or drilling or demolition or replacement, then it starts, you start thinking about different types of harm that's associated with these activities. Um, this is just a short list of types of things that that may trigger environmental resources. What are some other things that uh, come to mind um, that that are associated with with the types of projects that you guys are working on? Let's get that chat going. Repeat so, the question, please. Uh, I'm just trying to, to get a sense from the types of activities that might trigger an environmental impact. And, and so I just put these are very high level lists. You know, when we talk with HPTE, um, for them, it's, you know, they may say, oh, we're not doing any disturbance. We're just tolling all lanes on this interstate. All of those that are listed require it. Even all of them do because yeah. I've pretty much done it for all of them. <laughs> Yes, you have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so depending on the activity, there may be different types of impacts or different types of resources um, that um, that may do some harm. Mm -hmm. And so those are the things that, that environmental, that cast. Utility relocations, adding capacity. Mm -hmm. Good job. Yeah, so. Planting, painting bridges. Good. These Replacing are the things. Signals. Disposals not listed there. Yeah. I would add I mean, disposals. Good, good addition. Because yeah. the, they're different than devolutions. How so? Devolutions were um, devolving it to like a local agency. A lot of times with disposals, we're selling it to a property owner. There's a complete different thing there. So. Yeah. With the disposals, I can put some of the environmental responsibilities on the purchaser to save us an expense. On devolutions, a lot of times we do it, I do it to more things to protect us from like having a local agency come back. There's yeah. different things I do on both and different things I put back on whomever for, you know, let them have some onus to it. Well, so demo. But they're different. Thanks, Cassie. That's right. Demo and removal can get you into situations with uh, lead-based paints and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, That's even on in there. States retaining possession. Right. So these are the types of trigger words that, that the environmental managers are listening for. If you're mm -hmm. drilling, you might be hitting hazardous materials or groundwater. If you're um, disturbing the ground clearing and grubbing, then they're going to want to make sure that you're reestablishing an area after the, the other thing that's not on here is um, access, like permitting, because mm -hmm. that and requires it. Yeah, you might there might be interference with a business or some other activities or um, uh, detours with the trail that's being closed. Mm -hmm. So. Um, this is you know this when 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 you hear questions at a scoping meeting or an fir meeting it, these are the types of things that the the team will say this will help them understand um the level of effort needed um in order to clear a project hey david we have a really good question in the chat that is um are there environmental studies for roadway maintenance say like sweeping and it's interesting that you bring up sweeping because yes, we do have um, air quality, environmental problems, problems is the wrong word. Um, and especially in Denver Metro, we have a PM10 um, 
uh, re requirement. And so CDOT maintenance has a certain requirement for X number of sweepings that we do on our, on our facilities. So in this case, sweeping is the mitigation for PM10. It is a good question. And, and maybe it's worth a minute to um, talk about maintenance. And it, it's slightly different in that it doesn't, we're not using federal funds for maintenance for the most part. And so we don't have as much, uh, it doesn't go through a NEPA process uh, in the same sense where you kind of scope out, but you do look at programmatic activities like sweeping, um, mag chloride, de -ice, you know, de-icers and, and trying to figure out the environmental impacts on, on some maintenance activities. But it doesn't, it, we don't, it's delivered in, in a slightly different way. But I think it's, you know, just like we don't want to be doing things in, in a vacuum, we, we do want to be mindful of, as we deliver projects, what are the environmental or the, the maintenance needs for a, a project. And so they'll say maybe the footprint gets a little bit larger and you have to be scoping out um, the disturbance might be a little bit larger as a result. 